we know exercise is important, but how much exercise? What is the what is the most effective dose? Particularly if you don't like it to exercise, what's the minimal I could do to get the most out of exercise? Today we'll discuss dosing as it relates to exercise. Let's go. Welcome to the Dr. Geo Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Geo, where it is my goal to help you with your urological function and how to live better with age. Today, we're going to talk about a new study that came out on exercise and longevity. It was a good study just because it looked at 400,000 people uh, in a period of about 20 years or so, roughly about 20 years. And it looked at what are the what's the type of exercise What's the dosage of their exercise that helped you help them live longer? Because let's face it, for some of you who are starting at zero, you want to know, look, just tell me I hate exercise. I'm not an exercise person. Tell me what's the minimum that I need to do to live longer and better. So we're talking also quality of life. This particular study looked at, uh, uh, looked at only reducing the risk of mortality right, of, de- of, of, de- of death prematurely. And this was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, um, wonderful study by Coleman and, and, and his colleagues, um, uh, looked at um, from Brigham Young University, and they looked at 400,000 people they followed for a long time. What's the minimum effective dose that will help you live longer and reduce the risk of mortality, okay? When I, as I, as you hear me saying everything that I need to say about physical exercise, I'm also aiming for quality of life, optimal functionality. We don't only want to live longer. We want to live with optimal functionality, right? I I never met anyone who said, well, I just want to live longer. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, in a wheelchair, you know, without be, without much functionality. We want to do the things we, we like to do for as long as possible, right? So here is the conclusion of this study. The minimum effective dose for aerobic physical exercise is about one hour a week. This is the minimal effective dose. In other words, I hate exercise. My exercise person, what's the least I can do? What's the least I can do to live longer? One hour a week of physical aerobic exercise. I would split that up. So let's just say, as opposed to doing one hour just one week and that just for one day and that's it, I would split that up either 30 minutes twice a week or even 15 minutes four times a week, starting at zero. I haven't exercised in a long time, never really exercised, I hate exercise, whatever, one hour a week. Now, those in this study showed, and they, look, they looked at a huge population, so I, I take this for value. Those that exercised three hours a week had additional risk of lowering the risk of mortality, of dying prematurely, three hours a week. So one hour a week is good, three hours a week of physical aerobic exercise, even better. So then you can split that up, you know, 30 minutes, six times a week, let's say, three times a week, an hour, three times a week. This is a jog. This is on a treadmill. This is on a stationary bike, elliptical, whatever it is that you'll enjoy. Sometimes, by the way, in terms of getting yourself to do it, you can bundle. You can do the exercise as you listen to an audiobook, watch the news, but you need to get your keep your heart rate roughly about 220 minus your age. So let's say if you're if you're 60 years old, your heart rate should be around 160, a little bit less if you're less in shape. It's a roundabout. You take give or take 10 to 20 points there. Okay, that should be your heart rate. Or you should um, a good a good method of knowing your heart rate is your ability to have a conversation with someone else. If someone else was next to you, you should be able to you know string a couple of words together. Not sing, but string a couple of words together. That's a good way of measuring intensity. One hour a week. Want to do better? Three hours a week of aerobic exercise. But man, what if you want to crush it? And I, and I know many of you do. And maybe if you're starting at zero, you can work your way up. You work your way up. It's a process. If you want to crush it, you have to include, this is what the study says, and this is what the preponderance of research that I've ever read indicates. You need to do strength, strength training, weight-resistant exercise. There is no other way. 
the stronger you are, the better you do. You want to, particularly as you get older, you want to get stronger and you want to develop muscle. You want more muscle. They're not exactly the same. There's a, uh, when you do weight training and you do a significant amount of repetitions, let's say you do a, bar, a, a curls, right? You do curl, blah, blah, blah. You need to do roughly 12 to 15 repetitions to stimulate enough muscle. That, the more repetitions when you're weight training stimulates more muscle. Less repetition with more weight stimulates the neuromuscular system, the nerves that also stimulate muscle. So when you do less repetitions, you stimulate the nerves that stimulate muscles. When you and then that helps the, that whole system work better. So that's the beauty of strength training. Strength training stimulates nerves and muscle. When you do more repetition, you're stimulating more muscle than nerves. And then you get what's called hypertrophy. You get more muscle. Okay, which there, it's both imp- it, it's important, as particularly as you get older. So as you get older, you want aerobic act exercise and you want weight training. This is the medicine of physical exercise. I'm not mincing words here. Physi- we, we cannot window dress. Oh, well, it's a good idea to exercise. No, exercise is medicine. And you want to be able to do it as often as possible. And, as, and, 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 and at the right dosage, at the right dosage, one hour a week of physical aerobic exercise or three hours a week to live longer and lower your risk of mortality. If you want to do more and you want to live even better and reduce the risk of mortality even more and improve functionality as you get older, you have to include weight resistant training. Weight resistant training has to be included. That has to be about one to two times a week. I would say, well, at least the study says one to two times a week. I would say twice a week. Holistic but realistic. What do I do? Um, how do I get motivated? How do I keep it habitual? Look, the toughest thing to, with exercise is getting out the door. You don't want to start looking for your sneakers. I can't find my sneakers. I can't go. Well, my my exercise shorts, only the one pair of shorts that I use for exercise. <laughs> That's a poor excuse. One pair of shorts. That's all. Get it ready. Put it on. Get out the door. That's the toughest thing. Get out the door. Okay? Go to the gym. Uh, go to the park. Um, you know, go to the Peloton if that's what you use. Whatever. Just get to it. And once you get started, it's not that bad. You and I both know that. In terms of weight training, oh my God, I hate weight training. Oh Lord, I mean, it's so difficult to weight train. Uh, it's intimidating. I'm so weak. La 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 la. Holistic but realistic. You can start with, and and it does take, you have to master the form and technique of the movement. There's no question about that. Master the form and technique first, okay? And you may need help, either from YouTube videos or a personal trainer. Master the form and technique, and then slowly move up in weight. Roughly, you move up in weight. um, How do you know the, uh, the right weight? You should be able to do anywhere between one to 15 repetitions, but you should be able to complete the repetition. So let's just say that you're you're going to do six repetitions of a particular exercise, and then you do six. Let's say bench press, you do six, uh, two, five, six. You probably have one or two more in you. You don't do those one or two more or three more. So you stop around right around before um, full exhaustion, okay? So you stop two to three repetitions before complete exhaustion. Let's say you do six repetitions, bench press. You probably have one or two more in you, but you stop at six. That's a good gauge, okay, on, as to how much weight to, to lift. There is no other way than to, if, 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 if you're interested in lowering your risk of disease and reducing the risk of heart disease, of heart attacks, of cancer, of Alzheimer's, of dementia, physical exercise, lose the fear. Because I know there's fear in some of you for not doing it. Lose the fear. Forget about the fear. Go do it. Well, what if I get hurt? You're not going to get hurt if you do it properly, if you increase the intensity properly, if you master the technique, if you master the form, you're not going to get hurt. I don't want to be in pain as I get older. You're going to be in pain anyway. You're going to be in pain anyway. So don't worry about pain. Don't worry about might as well be fit and strong as you get older with pain. (laughs) 
because you we as we get older we'll likely suffer or have some pain of some sort okay and this message by the way is for anyone who is looking to reduce the risk of disease mortality but also those that already have disease like prostate cancer so you're able to live better despite prostate cancer by doing physical exercise that is the medicine okay particularly those guys on the androgen deprivation therapy from prostate cancer treatment. Make it happen. Live your best life. Live your best life through physical exercise. Exercise is medicine. Make it happen. This is Dr. Gio signing off. I'll talk to you next time.